Now, eventually, these disconnects usually resolve. So eventually, one of these markets is likely to snap back into alignment. But we don't know when that's going to happen. You know, it could be tomorrow. It could be um, you know Thursday. We uh, also have uh, options expiration, I believe, on Friday. So you know it's probably going to happen prior to then. But the point is that you know no one has a crystal ball where they know when that intermarket disconnect is going to get resolved. But when it does, then it usually results in a snapback where the markets realign. And when they do, whichever market is following can put in the bigger move. So what I mean by that is if, let's say, NQ puts in a breakdown below today's lows tomorrow, well, then we could see a bigger catch-up move in the S&P where the S&P might end up going down from, you know, 57, 15 or 20 or from this area, from the highs, you might see it go down quite easily into 56, 60 to 69. So, you know, you could get a um, pretty decent correction in the S&P if the NASDAQ continues to break down. Um, in that case, the S&P would be very disconnected from NQ. And uh, again, it could pull back to the 56, 60, 69 area without even breaking any major market structure. So, um, you know, you could get a 50 to 60 point snapback in the S&P with NASDAQ breaking lower. Now, in order for that to happen, NQ would have to break lower. NQ would have to take out more significant structure. Like, for example, if it takes out the recent swing low at 20,335, um, that would be a bigger break. That would be a more significant break in the NASDAQ. And that could trigger a snapback to the downside in the S&P. So now, as we head into the overnight and tomorrow, our short-term bias will continue to be neutral because of this risk point that's on the table now. And... Um, We'll need to see stability in NQ and strength in NQ in order for the S&P to put in any kind of sustainable breakout. So this is a inflection point. You know, this is a risk point in the market, and we need to be, I think, um, more cautious. Now, the other markets uh, or, or instruments I like to look at, uh, so this is on one of my screens, is... Um, just the stock charts of uh, the top holdings of the S&P and NASDAQ because um, the S&P and NASDAQ are both market cap weighted. So that means that the mega caps have more influence on the uh, movements of the S&P and NASDAQ. So I do like to be aware of, you know, what these big stocks are doing because it's uh, very difficult for the S&P to put in any kind of sustainable rally if these stocks are not participating in that rally, since they make up such a large portion of the index itself. So, um, you know, looking at these stocks, we can see that there are notable signs of recent weakness. You know, there's a disconnect. And this is really what's being represented in um, NQ as well, right? Because NQ is even uh, more concentrated. So, um, you know, this is yet another reason to maintain that neutral short-term bias. The fact that, you know, we've been seeing significant weakness come into these um, mega caps. So, you know, I'll continue to keep an eye on this as well. And if you guys want to have a similar kind of view set up on your side, then you can just take these six stocks and, um, you know, set up charts for yourselves as well. And, you know, we can see that on the one hand, these markets are weak. On the other hand, they are also uh, pushing down and approaching better support, right? So you can see that, you know, some of these stocks are now testing their recent breakouts or they're just at balance area lows. So these are inflection points. Um, you know, these are spots where buyers need to defend and step in to some of these stocks. So, you know, as an example, if, um, you know, Facebook starts breaking down below 479 to like 485 or so, you know, that would be a bearish 
signal on Facebook. And, you know, similarly, if these other stocks start breaking down below their recent lows, that would be a multi-day balance breakdown. That could trigger a downside move in the NASDAQ. That could then drag the S&P lower. So all of these things are very interconnected. And that's why I like to have a view on, um, you know, these major uh, holdings of uh, the S&P and NASDAQ. So I just want to share that with you as well. Uh, just something to be mindful of. Uh, again, you know, they're at support. So there's always a possibility that buyers step in to NQ and these stocks and, you know, S&P continues to kind of hold its recent bullish pattern and try to go up. And that's why, again, the short-term bias is neutral. I don't know which way it's going to go. I don't know if it's going to break out or if it's going to break down, but there are notable warning signs now presenting themselves in the market. So at the very minimum, we should be cautious with the trades that we take until we get resolution of this disconnect uh, between the NASDAQ and the S&P. Uh, once we get resolution, I think that uh, there will be much better opportunities. And the resolution can happen in either direction. Again, I don't know which way it's going to go. But if NASDAQ starts rallying, then the S&P we know has already been strong, and it can also head higher. But if NQ starts breaking down, then it's going to be very difficult for ES to manage any kind of sustainable breakout, and it will be uh, prone to a uh, larger pullback. So um, those are the things that are on the radar as we uh, head into tomorrow.